So the Providence mine plans and sections were destroyed in a fire many years ago. This surviving longitudinal cross section looking east shows the two principal ore chutes on the Providence vein system and the main areas of production mining on the right. To the left, the zone it connects northward to the McCarthy and Mexican zones. To provide necessary survey control, the company commissioned a modern 3D laser survey of the accessible mine workings. We wish to acknowledge the good work of Tim Daly and his team at Aerogeometrics of Vancouver for their expertise and professionalism in accomplishing this survey despite the irregular spaces and close quarters presented by the mine. What we're looking at here is the brand new high definition 3D laser scan survey of the underground 600 level accessible portion of the mine. You're at the main portal, the main access to the mine, and with this view we can fly in along the drift in this fashion. And as we do, you gain an appreciation for the level of detail that this sort of laser scan survey actually provides us. You can see the, uh, the old tracks, the floor of the drift, both ribs, the back, and all of the irregularities and dropouts and blast pattern as they occur. The, uh, the spheres are part of the apparatus used to execute the survey. They have to do with the registration of the instrument as it moves forward. What we're doing here is flying in along the main crosscut toward the uh, Consuela crosscut and the Consuela workings. What I can do is this, which takes you out of the drift and puts you in the vantage point of being in solid rock looking at features that show up essentially as negative images uh, many of them geological in nature that show up on the um, on the sides of the uh, the drift itself what we'll do is is move forward to the first pair of crosscuts And this is the point at which the uh, developers intersected the projection of the main Providence vein system as it becomes the, uh, the Consuela and the ultimately the McCarthy and the Mexican zones further up its surface. Right there is the first crosscut. And again, just uh, because this is a good spot to illustrate, you can see how the resolution and the detail is so good that you can literally follow the upper and lower contacts of the vein itself in the back of the drift simply because of the millimeter level exquisite detail provided by the scatter of the laser light by this instrument. In the 1930s the developers in addition to uh, producing and exploring on the Consuela, we're making the effort to connect those workings with the older portion of the Providence mine. Here you see the uh, Consuela crosscut being advanced to the east. The turn was made here, and the advance to the south followed narrower um, sheared quartz veins that are related to but not directly connected with the main zone. The breakthrough into the Providence eventually occurred against a surveyed coordinate right about there. Let's take a look at the uh, the old part of the mine and the survey will take us now into the area of the inclined shaft So the Providence was uh, initially accessed by a shaft, inclined shaft from surface that went all the way down to the 1200 level. Where the 600 level drift uh, encounters it, 
it passes behind it and there's uh, a chamber here that opens up that is uh, about seven meters from the uh, the floor to the back if we go right inside it gives you a look up that shaft and underlines the uh, one of the characteristics of the survey instrument in that it is line of sight it can see up the shaft for some considerable distance it can also see up the stopes even further but it can't see around corners so it's able to provide us with detail for I would say about half the distance up to the next level which is the um, the 500 level above the um, early operators were very very diligent and uh, profit oriented and interested in following streaks and uh, high-grade subdomains within the uh, this wider sheeted vein system that quite quartzitic you see one of them right here uh, so this uh, small stope is there for a reason it was following that particular streak of high-grade material and uh, you can you can see how the uh, the stoping and the drifts are oriented in order to follow the individual contacts of high grade material as it runs along the drift. Let's move over to the uh, the north end of the mine uh, of the period and take a look at the largest stope that we have at the 600 level, which is right here. This is an impressive excavation when you see it underground. We'll go inside and we'll use this position to illustrate one more characteristic of the survey. At each of these uh, stations, we can click on the sphere, give the system a moment to pull the view, and we're looking at a natural light view now, a photo mosaic essentially, that is capable of looking way up into the back of the uh, the stope as you can see uh, at the edge of the vein that was being actively mined and you see that vein and its thickness right there so this is the target of the uh, the mining effort uh, the dark material here is water that's um, the, the mine is flooded to the 600 level Eventually, we will uh, dewater and access to the lower reaches of the mine. For now, let's move a little bit further north and go back to the 3D view. And it's important to make a, um, a point here regarding the position of the access drift and the exploration target that lies directly in front of us. Here we'll come outside of the stope. And there in the back is the footwall contact of the main vein out to the edge of the mining, right at this point here. Just beyond is the point at which the 1935 access came in and broke through. The important point to be made here is that the geometry for us 85 years later in modern times couldn't be more ideal because what we know now some of it because of our laser survey in conjunction with the underground mapping is that the main target the vein system itself is leaving this drift and entering the uh, the wall rock to the west of the drift right there and it doesn't get exposed or re-emerge until we have it again at last way up at the uh, Consuela uh, drift and crosscut way in there so so that distance we've measured it is about 263 meters the consequence of it all is that this drift is ideally positioned for us to cost-effectively uh, test and um, develop a resource on the portion of this vein that is not explored that lives in here. 
And uh, not only is the drift well positioned, but there's even at least two places on it in which uh, we already have ready-made slashed uh, thicker and, and uh, roomier places to, uh, to put the underground drill. This is one of them right here, for example. I'll fly you inside and you can, you can see this used to be a, a siding that was used for uh, you know, storing material, including rails and so on, or, or as a refuge station in which the drift is twice as wide as its usual width. And uh, that provides adequate uh, back for a, an underground drill to be set up and uh, do azimuth and dip fan shots uh, into the, the zone itself. Now, we have reason to believe uh, from surface work, and we'll get into that in the, uh, the next section, that uh, this piece in here might well be providing us with the next uh, high grade plume of mineralization within the, the vein. If we like what we see uh, in shallow holes here, then we can back up onto this drill drift, or this uh, hanging wall drift, further back and drill deeper and penetrate the same zone even further down below the 600 level. So we're, uh, the geometry is very suitable for cost-effective development of a resource uh, off the end of the known mining, right in this area here. What we'll do in the next section is give you a look at the surface topography and the way in which the underground and the, uh, the detail that we have from that projects to surface. Providence Gold Mines Incorporated's Providence property is located 25 kilometers east of Sonora, California. The property occupies the eastern bank of the North Fork of the Tuolumne River, shown in relief here. It consists of a series of patented and staked claims. The property is one kilometer wide, east-west, by 2.2 kilometers long, north-south. Within the property boundaries, there are at least three principal gold-bearing vein systems. Providence itself, the most prominent, is, is actually 16 kilometers long overall, hosting several ex-producing gold mines, including the Buchanan in the south and the Soulsbyville in the north. On the Providence property, the majority of production was from the Providence mine, with records indicating that approximately 225,000 ounces were recovered in the early 1900s. Elsewhere, approximately 75,000 ounces were recovered from the Goldwyn mine in this area. Lesser amounts were recovered from some of the small adits and shafts located on the property. Providence Gold Mines Incorporated acquired the property with the purpose of locating resources along strike and down dip. To evaluate the property, in 2017, a program of soil sampling, surface rock chip sampling, mapping and prospecting, together with underground geological and structural mapping and underground channel sampling, was undertaken. A test soil grid was established over the main area of the gold mineralization. You see it here, contoured and draped on topography. The, the expression is really quite good. The, um, what you tend to see are sharp cutoffs in the anomaly at the uh, surface projection of the vein system, and then downslope dispersion of these anomalies off the flanks of the fairly steep uh, west-facing slopes. At the Providence Mine itself, in this area, soil samples individually assayed up to 1.8 grams per tonne. A long strike further north in this area, uh, anomalous gold values are in a transect extending from the north slopes of the Providence below up to the Consuelo Drift. In all likelihood, these reflect the project's main gold-bearing vein system brought to surface. In addition, there is a, a third trend through here that appears to merge near the McCarthy and extends southward. And uh, within that trend you can see anomalous gold values all the way through. When we look at the property geology in three dimensions, 
you'll see that the veins are all relatively parallel to each other and they dip at approximately 50 degrees to the east. In this view, the blue indicates the development on the 600 level. It should be noted that this is the level that we have accurate data for by virtue of the recent uh, laser survey. However, there are a series of levels that go down from the former shaft head frame to the 1200 level, roughly in here, or 1450 feet along the inclined surface. These veins in the uh, eastern district of the mother load belt tend to go deep, sometimes in excess of 2000 feet in some of the developments, and we are projecting that this could quite easily happen on our property. The veins are open along strike and at depth. In the old days, in an area near the shaft, there was recorded production that included a 14 month period in which a 10 stamp mill was continuously operating, recovering gold that was averaging an extraordinary 15 ounces per ton. That's a pretty healthy number and you can live with a lot of conditions to make that work nowadays. Along straight, there are large stopes to the north. Uh, we don't have production numbers for them, but they are recorded uh, as having significant gold. At depth, down to the 1200 level, one of the old reports describes a 15 foot wide zone averaging 0.75 ounces per ton. We don't have actual historic production records, we just have hearsay from the previous operators on that one. Looking at where some of the uh, potential exists, we're encouraged by the area described in the previous segment on the 3D laser survey. Near the main access drift, stretching for some 260 meters toward the uh, Consuela crosscut that has not been explored. The vein is projected to lie within the wall rock west of the drift and could be easily tested by drilling involving short holes drilled from underground in this area. With success, we could back, step back using another hanging wall drift and uh, drill deeper holes that would pierce the zone at greater depths. O on surface, the company intends to uh, continue its detailed exploration we have already located several uh, adits and inclined shafts and open cuts here and here on the Providence trend that were not described in early reporting. These make the story much better, indicating that the main Providence vein system continues the entire length of the property. The future is to do additional surface exploration and to complete a drill program. We'll see where it goes from there.